Let me ask, uh, and I still want to say Governor Secretary, Governor Secretary, you know, uh, when you were governor, uh, I'd seen somewhere that we increased the amount of natural gas usage uh, about every year, as I recall, and yet the air quality continued to improve every single year. Uh, in, isn't that accurate? Yeah. And, and um, Louie, if I could, could I give a little of my time Please. right now yeah. to Alex and, and ask Alex to talk about cost-effective uh, fossil fuels and why the wealth that they create allow for the technologies that allow for the emission reductions. Alex, would you touch on that, please? Uh, sure. If, if uh, Representative Gomer is okay. Sure, that, please. I'm happy, happy to talk about that. Okay. So I think I use the term cost effective, and I think it's really important. There are four dimensions of cost effective, and right now fossil fuels are the only energy technology that meet them. So to be cost effective is to be affordable, reliable, versatile, and scalable. The first two are probably clear, but the, the, the third is really important. Versatile means every type of machine, including things like cargo ships and airplanes and really high heat machines that we use for industry that we don't think too much about, that we don't use electricity for these things today because it's not the cost effective way. And then scalable is really important for billions of people in thousands of places. And so we've got a world where the vast majority of people still lack cost effective energy. We have 3 billion people using less electricity than one of our refrigerators uses. We have a third of the world using wood and animal dung. So you've got a situation where you've got one uniquely cost-effective form of energy, namely fossil fuels, that provide 80% of the world's energy and are still growing in a world that desperately needs more energy. So point number one is that reducing CO2 emissions should absolutely not be your highest priority empowering the world should be your highest priority. And as I mentioned, the more you empower the world, the safer you become from climate, even as your emissions increase, because your ability to master the climate is so high. But also the only way that emissions will get reduced long-term is with truly cost-effective alternatives. And this is part of the reason I'm so big on liberating natural gas, but above all, liber liberating nuclear which, which uh, Governor Perry mentioned. Again, is China, think about it, is China gonna use uh, solar and wind? No, they're using coal to produce solar and wind. Is India? No, everyone is rightly going to use the most cost-effective form of energy. So if your concern is emissions, priority number one, two, and three has to be liberating the promising low emission alternatives. That's the actual way to get emissions down long-term if that's what you care about. But unfortunately, the left tends to be anti-fossil fuel, anti-nuclear, and anti-hydro also anti-mining, which solar and wind require record amounts of mining. And the root of that, as I explain in Fossil Future, is the goal of that movement is not to advance human flourishing on Earth, it's to eliminate human impact on Earth. And so they have a hostility toward all energy because it involves impact. And so I think that the concern with climate is a sham. Well, that's an enlightening answer. I appreciate that very much. And